Well, hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to share something that's been really highly requested. I have been doing budgeting videos on my channel for several years now. I kind of took a break last year to be honest and now I have some financial content coming up and these are just questions that I've been asked over the years so I'm going to break them up into some smaller videos. But today I wanted to talk about five budgeting basics that really helped me in my financial journey and to really get a hold of of my money. So I'm gonna link in a card up above and down below. It's um, my money talk playlist. It's where I talk about all things finances, whether it be budgets or other things. Um, that'll be down below if you guys wanna kinda like watch my journey. I am a single woman who lives alone. I don't have any kids. However, I do have a dog and I operate on one income. So that being said, um, I do also follow the Dave Ramsey plan and have done this also for several years. If you're curious, I am on baby step four. So as of right now, I'm contributing 15% of my income to my retirement and I'm actually going to do a dedicated retirement video and talk all about that stuff. So let's get into the five budgeting basics that really helped me along my journey. So let's go. Number one, writing down all of your bills. For me, that was a huge game changer and also any other expenses, but your bills and other expenses. Because really your grocery isn't necessarily a bill, but it's something that happens every month or every week or however often you go out to shop. So it's definitely an expenditure from your account every month. So that was a big thing for me. I kind of just let it go and didn't really think about it for a long time. It was just kind of like, oh, the money's there. I'm just gonna, you know, spend this amount of money or that amount of money. And sometimes at the end of the month, it would be really, really tight and I'd have to make some decisions and either go without certain things or put stuff on a credit card, which is not a good habit. But once I actually wrote everything down, it made me see clearly in black and white how much money I needed to make and then I could compare that to how much money I was getting in my paychecks every month. So I could really see apples to apples what was going on and then make some choices from there. So kind of segueing into still in the category of writing everything down, adjust or delete certain bills that you can live without. If you live with an entire family, that might be a conversation. For me, some of the things I did was I purchased less groceries because I didn't really need as much as I was buying because I was kind of like, oh, I'd stock up there if there was a sale or something like that. And um, another thing I did was I completely cut out my cable bill. Um, I just decided I didn't need that. But again, like I said before, I am a single person and was a single person at that point as well. So I didn't have to consult anybody else, um, which was also kind of of nice and then also kind of like whoa all of this is on me so anyway but just having those tough conversations with your family and just like really thinking and readjusting what is going out versus coming in also for me I ended up uh, picking up a little bit of overtime so like you can definitely increase your income as well so if your employer allows it picking up some overtime I also got a part-time job as well so that was just something that really helped me kind of move the needle in what I wanted to achieve Achieve. So that's the first thing write everything down and then it'll be super clear What you got to work with and if you do have varied expenses every month definitely write those down as well So you just have everything written on paper. It's gonna be a little overwhelming at first. I understand However, it's gonna be very freeing once you kind of go through the whole process of budgeting Second big tip is use cash for your impulse categories for me. My impulse categories were food and clothing and I think that's a big category for a lot of people is the food and clothing because you go to the grocery store you just put a bunch of stuff in the cart that looks good and then you check out and you don't really think about it and you swipe the debit card or whatever but when I actually used cash I don't actually use cash for any of these categories anymore since I've been doing it for years and years and years for whatever reason in my mind my mental state has already flipped so I know there's people that have been doing uh, cash envelopes for decades and they still need to do that and I totally get it um, however I used to pull out cash for my grocery my dining and my clothing budget and I know you're probably wondering like how do you buy clothes online if you have it taken out in cash well this is gonna sound super redundant but it really helped me so what I would do is say I took $30 out a month to have in my clothing budget for example 
say I saved up for two months and I had $60 in there and I really wanted to buy a couple of items from say like Old Navy for example and they only had them online. What I would end up doing is I could use my debit card if I had the money in there at the time make the purchase and go directly to the bank and put that money back in there. And I know it was super tedious, but that's what I did. Um, sometimes if I was being really good, I would go and deposit the money first and then go back to my apartment and then go online and make my purchase. But you know, in case like my size or something was sold out, um, I would do that. But I made a commitment to myself that I was gonna do that and I did it and it really helped my mental state as to just change my behaviors. And that was the biggest thing is changing my behaviors. So yeah, that really, really worked well for me. And I know you guys are probably like, girl, that's so tedious. And it is, it is. But budgeting for me was just such a lifesaver. As for my cash envelope system for my grocery and dining out money, um, at first it was just grocery money. I didn't do any dining out because I was saving. And I'll talk about my goals in just a minute. I would pull out, say, 200, 300, however many dollars per month and I would have it all in cash and I would keep it in my wallet and I would have these like little clips that would be on the different categories of cash so I knew what they were. So it kind of organized in my wallet pretty nicely so I wouldn't spend my food money on clothes and like vice versa, you know what I mean? Also if you have like an entertainment category or something like that, say if you're gonna be buying like a concert ticket or whatever, you could always just give some money, like say you're gonna go with a group of friends, you can say, hey, next time I see you, can I just give you some cash from this category because maybe you've been saving up for things like that. There's a lot of different categories that you can definitely utilize cash for that really work. Um, and for me, it was all about just changing my behaviors and it was my mental behavior that I needed to change for sure. So again, the cash categories really worked well for me and whatever my impulse categories were. So that is something I highly recommend for first time budgeters. Third tip is track your progress. Tracking your progress, whether it be on paper or an app, um, there's some really good apps out there. The You Need a Budget app I've heard really good things about. Also Every Dollar, which is part of the Dave Ramsey plan, is really, really good. Um, I know with the Dave Ramsey one, the Every Dollar, you can actually link it up to your bank account for a specific fee every month. But that's for me, I can tell you that I would probably use a digital app if I were married, but I'm not. So me being single, I just write things down on paper, or at least did write every single thing down on paper for years and years and years. Like I said, I've been doing it a long time, so for me, I don't need that accountability anymore because I know where my money's going. Um, if for some reason I feel like I'm tripping up and kind of when I stopped writing things down, I felt like I was kind of messing up a little bit, so I would go back to my paper process as well. So, and I would write down every little thing, you know, like, oh, my cash, I spent this amount at the grocery store, so I'm gonna write that down, even though I can clearly reconcile that in my wallet. It didn't matter, I just wanted to see every little thing and like also track like my fuel expenses and things like that. Um, sometimes fuel people will take cash out for, but to be honest, I live in the Minneapolis area and a lot of the gas stations are pay at the pump. So it's a category also for me that I don't feel like I overspend in just because I just fill up when I need to fill up. You know, you can't like, I mean, I guess you could like hoard gasoline, but I, I just didn't feel like I needed that. So I kind of needed to like go on an average and then with gas prices increasing and decreasing and things like that, um, sometimes your budget will be more or less just depending. And also if you have like a road trip or something like that coming up, you can kind of like figure that out within your monthly budget like before you set up your month. So definitely track your progress. You'll be able to see the holes or you'll be able to see your wins or your losses and then kind of adjust for the next month. Um, so yeah, I mean sometimes things come up and you're like oh I wasn't even thinking about that or like I have an old dog uh, you know he's over 13 years old and things come up and it's like oh man I had to take him to the vet or we had these unexpected expenses with medications or something like that so it's just something you can like readjust for the next month and sometimes you'll end up seeing like a trend go through when you start writing stuff down which I think is very very valuable the fourth thing this was really hard for me guys. This one was really hard. Being content with your life. I know, I know, it's so hard. I was definitely wrapped up for years and years in 
social media and I mean I'm still on social media don't get me wrong but I would watch these amazing beauty and makeup influencers and like today I'm wearing no stitch of makeup because I don't care but I was obsessed with getting the new thing and like oh if I only got these bracelets or I only got this shirt or I only got this eyeshadow palette my life would be like theirs and I know in my mind that that was not me in a way that's what I thought and it was really difficult for me to start to disassociate from that and say you know what I just need to be content with the things that I have and then also appreciating and loving the things that I had already chosen for my life or curated for my life and use those things and be appreciative of those things, whether it's a shirt, whether it's some bracelets that I don't wear, <laughs> and also like makeup and skincare. It's like use what you have and if and when you need more, which is when the bottle's gone, not when someone else just starts talking about a new product line you're like ooh, i want to check that out give yourself a little bit of pause use and appreciate what you have and then when you're ready to make another purchase do it in an informed way also the whole comparison game too kind of plays into it so you see these you know whether it's people actually physically in your life where it's friends or family or co-workers and they're taking these wonderful vacations buying new cars buying new houses doing home remodels which by the way i'm in the middle of a home remodel so i'm kind of like talking about myself here but we as outsiders don't know what sacrifices it took for them to do that whether they put it on a credit card i don't know i don't have their life or whether they saved so they could do those things p.s that's what i did so you don't necessarily see the struggles and either the months or years of saving that went into them being able to go on this trip, do that home purchase, or buy that new car. Because no one really talks about it, unfortunately. And I feel like it would be nice to normalize talking about money, but I know it's still kind of a little bit of a touchy subject for some people, and I totally get that. Being content with where you are in your life is also a huge game changer, and this is definitely the thing I struggled with the most that I'm going to talk about today. Definitely, definitely, 100%. And the fifth thing I'm going to talk about today is having goals. I know that goal setting is something that I don't talk too much about on my channel, but having a goal with your money is so empowering because you can kind of see where you are and then like the steps to get to that goal whether it's paying off your debt or even paying off one of your several debts like I said before I follow the Dave Ramsey plan I will be leaving a link down below to um, the Ramsey solutions website so you can kind of see what the program is it's very very basic but it worked really well for me and then also other goals like having an emergency fund um, saving for a house saving for a trip saving for retirement whatever your financial goals are to actually write them down and like work together um, especially if you're married or you know have a family you know sometimes you can talk about like hey well we're not gonna do X right now because we're working towards Y so you know you can say okay well we're planning a trip say next year so we have to sacrifice and not do some of these other things because we want to do this other thing so you can kind of I mean I don't know I shouldn't really be giving advice on like how to parent or like talk to kids or anything because I don't have any and my dog doesn't listen to me anyway so I just encourage an open dialogue and conversation in whatever you think is appropriate for your own kids or your own family. But um, learning to sacrifice, I think, is a big, big thing. And then when you do reach your goals, you can all celebrate as a family or like me, I sit here and celebrate myself and go, yeah, girl, you did it. <laughs> um, so it's just one of those things where having a goal is very motivational and really, really helps. Um, I also wanted to show what I do. So this is my Aaron Condren binder. I'll leave links below if you guys are interested in this. Um, but here is my budget, just like an overview of my budget. And this is what I do. Um, there's a video on this, which I, um, it's in that money talk playlist, but I'll link it up in a card for you guys as well. But um, 
This works well for me. I don't put my income on here and I also don't track every little thing anymore like I said. But I just wanted to give you guys some you know, five good budgeting basics that have worked for me over the years and I really hope that you guys got some value out of this video and maybe got a couple of tips that might motivate you to change some of your habits regarding money. So that is going to be it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit that red subscribe button, leave a comment below if you have any other questions or any other money related video topics that you might want to know about. Who knows? I might turn it into a video at some point. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah.